What if I told you that you, yes you, who are running a successful business right now have not actually started your real business? When if I told you that right now, as you're making money, as you're growing your brand, you're finally doing it. Now, entrepreneurship is actually not the path to financial freedom that you might have been sold on. Well, I am telling you that. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, Greg here with another video. And today I wanted to talk about something that I have seen and observed after helping sell over 2000 businesses. I have helped make over 78 millionaires through the Empire Flippers Marketplace platform. And I think this is a very powerful lesson. And if you want to make a lot of money in 2024 and beyond, I think you're gonna enjoy this video. So the first thing we need to discuss is what I call the hamster wheel. You see, most people, they get into business, they start a business either accidentally or on purpose, and they all want something pretty similar. They want to have that financial freedom. They want to grow. They want to have all this stuff that the gurus in front of Lambos are selling us every single day single day on my Facebook feed. Why are you coming at me so hard with those? Anyways, the funny thing about this is when those gurus are selling you the courses, talking about the financial freedom that you can get from entrepreneurship, you might be saying right now, as now that you're running a successful business, like BS, like that was, didn't work out at all, at all as that ad said, right? And there's a lot of truth to that because these gurus are missing a very important piece when it comes to financial freedom through entrepreneurship. And that is what I'm going to talk about. As you know, because you are most likely a successful entrepreneur if you're watching this, you know that as you grow more successful, so let's say you're an e-commerce store owner, that you are on kind of this vicious hamster wheel. You need to order inventory and then you need to pay marketing to go and sell that inventory, which increases the demand that your market wants, which increases the cost of the inventory because now you need to order more inventory, which means now you need to have better and more expensive probably marketing to sell that more inventory, which creates more demand and the hamster Hamster wheel goes around and round and round and it's quite stressful. I have a business buyer, he's bought millions of dollars worth of businesses for me. And he, this is a very funny quote, like I love all these e-commerce entrepreneurs. They're all so rich and they're completely broke. This is why, because you are on this vicious hamster wheel. So those gurus that are selling courses about financial freedom, they're actually right. You can get financial freedom through all this. And you know deep down that is true too. Otherwise, why are you doing all of this, right? Do better yourself, do better your own financial position. The key thing is, is that these gurus are not telling you the true secret, the thing that makes it all work. They're missing out on the final ingredient that gets you out of this vicious hamster wheel. That moment when you start your real business is the moment you sell your current business. So you can exit your business. Let's say it's a $5 million e-commerce store and you're on this vicious hamster wheel. Your every metric of growth, every single tier of growth you get to is just like pulling you apart, right? So you have to re-pivot, you have to reorganize your company. Basically, it's almost like you're starting a new company. And so when you go and sell your business instead, for the first time in your entire entrepreneurial career, you are now divorced from that vicious hamster wheel. You don't care what Google algorithm updates happen. You don't care about the cost of advertising rising. You don't care about any logistic supply chain catastrophe where you're losing a cargo <laughs> or a cargo container in the ocean or anything like that, right? So this is a very powerful moment for you. And for the first time, you will now have money in your pocket because that $5 million you got from exiting your business is in your pocket. Google and Meta cannot take that away from you. If you invest in their stock, maybe they will, but you know what I mean? It is now your money. This is your nest egg that no one else can now touch at the moment of your exit. That's the thing that gurus always forget to talk about. It's all good and fine and fine and dandy to build out these big businesses, but the true moment of freedom, that's what you're looking for, only truly happens when you exit that business in my mind. Now, when you exit that business, that is also when the start of your true business happens. And I've seen this over and over again through my own clientele. You see at Empire Flippers, I'm a big believer in repeat customers. Every entrepreneur, every marketer worth their salt should be trying to get their customers to buy again and again. Now, when it comes to our marketplace, we don't really have repeat sellers. Now we do, but when a seller sells their business, it often takes them a couple of years before they're ready to sell another business. Sometimes three, four years. If it's a bigger business, it might be never. Some people sell one business and that's kind of it. They're done. They're big $10 million exit, right? We just sold a, a $12 million exit. The seller's over the moon. That's a lot of money to get for something that started off as probably a side hustle, right? So when it comes to Empire Flippers repeat customers, typically it's not the sellers I focus on. Typically it's the buyers. The buyers, business buyers, they end up buying a lot more businesses a lot faster than sellers sell business. And the thing that is really interesting that I have seen over and over again now across those 2000 transactions I talked about is that our sellers often become 
become our buyers. Now, for the very first time, they have all this liquidity, which allows them to go and acquire businesses. And there's something else that's extremely important. I feel like no one ever really talks about this when it comes to selling your business. And that is opening up what I call the doors of possibilities. And those doors of possibilities, one of those possibilities is becoming a business buyer. And in my mind, that is when you really start your business. See, I believe the fastest way for you to grow your wealth is not through the writ of a startup, which of course you can do. It's just really, really hard. Look at the failure rate. Instead, it is through acquisitions. I think acquiring a profitable business already making money is the best way and the legit fastest way I personally know to grow some incredible wealth. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the start of your real business. You are growing business right now. Let's say you do that exit. Okay, Greg, all done. I got my million dollars and plus in my pocket. So talk to me why I should buy a business as my next venture. Glad you asked, viewer. So the advantage of buying a business over building, there's tons of them. I can't go into all of them in this video, but for one, one of the biggest advantage I mentioned earlier that sellers take years sometimes to sell their second business because they're stuck building the next one. Buyers do not have this problem. A buyer comes in buys a business and that business it takes the years of pain that the entrepreneur normally has to feel as they're building their business and shrinks that down it shrinks years into minutes the next thing that you've got going on for you so not only are you buying this timeline where you get to skip 15 to 18 to 24 to 30 plus months by acquiring a business you already have a lot of cool things going for you. you have product market fit and to be honest one of the biggest things I see that fails for businesses is they can never get the product market fit right it's really hard it's not easy to find something that the market truly wants and be able to provide it right and be the one like yeah I choose you over competitor A or Z or whatever right so by buying the business is already profitable you already have the product market fit. This is huge. This is massive. By having that product market fit and all the systems already working, making money, that means you get to focus on growth rather than laborious customer research where you don't know if it's ever going to pan out. You already know it's going to pan out because the business already makes money. The next thing you get when you buy a business, so you sell your business and when you go and acquire businesses, you get access to some incredible tools of leverage. These are the same tools that you had in your business that you just sold, but only after like a couple years of success because most businesses starting out just simply don't have any of these tools of leverage. There's five main tools of leverage here that I am referring to. The first is marketing funnel. So if you're buying a business already making money, it already has some sort of working marketing funnel. Now it might be a really simple funnel in the case of a content site, where it's just Google traffic coming in, buying a product through an affiliate link, or it could be something that's much more complex and honestly a lot more sophisticated, say like an e-commerce store with cross sales, down sales, up sales, all that done, right? But you coming in as the acquirer could go in and just focus on tweaking those marketing funnels or even a five, 10% lift is dramatic compared to the cost of acquiring that business. Next to a leverage is pricing strategies. If you go and buy an e-commerce store with your liquidity from your exit, you can adjust prices. I have a friend, this isn't e-commerce, this isn't SaaS. He bought a software from us for around $500,000. Over a period of 18 months, that SaaS is now worth probably closer to one and a half million. And one of the big things he did is that seller, for whatever reason, over a you know almost a two decade period of time, never adjusted their prices, never lifted the prices at all. So he played with pricing dynamics and he found a price point that the customers were more than willing to pay for and he put them on recurring for some reason the business was never on recurring which is wild what a great deal that buyer got but this is just one of the other things you get to test you see most sellers and you pro uh, probably have done this as well you find a price that the market converts at and then you never touch it again you never revisit it though you probably should revisit it like once or twice a year to see if the market demands have changed. Sometimes a lower price will lead to higher profits and sometimes a higher price will lead to higher profits, right? It's always a balancing game of testing. But when you go and acquire a business, almost no conversion rate optimization related to price is almost ever done. I've seen it only a handful of times across 2000 businesses we've sold. So it's a powerful tool of leverage and it's immediate feedback, just like it happens so fast. Next is new product launches. You already have a working system, right? And most likely, like if you're buying an e-commerce store or say like an Amazon FBA business, Amazon FBA, a big part of the life
lifeblood is product launches. If you buy one that is already profitable, it is a very good chance the seller already has like four or five products research and outline for product launches. You can just focus on continuing growing that along with the marketing funnels and the pricing tweaks. It's starting to add up into quite a lot of stuff you can do right away when you buy a business. And the finally, the last two, customer data. You have the CRM, you have the email list, you have the customer list, all that good stuff, and then synergy. So as you grow, you will probably end up having a portfolio of businesses that could all be working together. You have a content site about fitness, linking to your supplements brand on your Shopify store. There's all sorts of room for incredible magic to happen between your businesses. And these synergies are fantastic. You could plug in one successful business that already has all this traffic, the one that you acquired, with another one that you acquire that also has all this successful traffic. And suddenly two plus two doesn't equal four, it could equal 16. Now the final bit about the advantages of buying over building, there's way more advantages that I just talked about, obviously. But one of my favorites is the fact that you can sell right away. Now I'm like, wait a second, I just bought this business. What do you mean I could sell right away? I'll tell you a story. So I have a customer of ours. This happened years and years ago, and I highly do not recommend you do this. It was very risky of him to do this if this was his strategy, but I, did, I just think it's a very funny thing he did. So he bought a very small content site from us of about $100,000. It was a bidded war. There was tons of buyers going after it, and he ended up getting it for 100K. Great, awesome. We started migrating the business over to him, and he said, hey, were there other people interested in buying this business? And I said, yeah, actually quite a lot. He said, great. Could you tell them uh, I'll sell it to them right now for 115K, see if anyone's interested? Sure. Keep in mind, he's owned this business for like not even an hour at this point, right? We haven't even truly started migrating the business over to him. But we reach out to all the buyers and sure enough, one of the buyers says, yeah, I'll buy it for 115K right now. Sent him the money, the dude made $15,000 in roughly an hour. <laughs> like that's a while. If he started a business from scratch, there is no way he could have made that much money in an hour. Like sure, there are methods to do it for sure. But the grand scope of things, like the law of averages, that is just incredibly unreasonable thing to ask. Not at all a completely unreasonable thing when it comes to buying a business. Now, I would recommend buying a business to try to sell it in an hour. That is an edge case, but it demonstrates my point. Sellers, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, they sell a business, they don't come back to us for several years because they're building up a new one from scratch. Versus buyers, they come and buy a business from us. They might have it for three months, six months, or 12 months and come back and sell it with us. And all the while, they're buying other businesses from us that they also come back and sell with us. So I've been with EF over almost eight years now. Really, I'm becoming grandpa empire over here. I have seen the same business on our marketplace sold five different times. That's wild. And you just can't do this type of stuff if you're building from scratch. So buying a business is one of the biggest advantages. So when it comes to selling your business, when it comes to starting your real business, that is when we enter to what I call the doors of possibilities. You see, when you are running your e-commerce store or whatever business you have, and you have to keep reinvesting over and over and over again into your inventory and marketing for growth, you don't have a lot of liquidity happening. The doors of possibilities are like, I just need to buy more inventory and marketing, right? Like there's, there's not that much you can do. You got to follow this well-worn path. But when you sell your business, you suddenly find yourself in this hallway that is full of doors and each one of these doors leads to a brand new possibility. Only one of those possibilities, by the way, is going and buying businesses. There's a bunch of other stuff you could do at that moment of liquidity because that liquidity allows you to travel down this hallway to do things that were simply not, never even options before. Like the hallway didn't exist, the doors didn't exist. But now that you sold your business, all these different doors exist. Like buying a business, you now have the liquidity to do that. Buying real estate, you now have the liquidity to do that. Buying a lot of stocks and memes stocks and meme crypto coins want to recommend it but hey you got the liquidity to do it so you know go knock yourself out the analogy i like to talk about when it comes to the doorways of possibilities is business is a lot like a game of chess when it comes to chess when it comes to your cash flow your net profit that is the king of your chessboard but when it comes to your liquidity that's the queen of your chessboard now we got to protect the king at all costs if we lose the king we lose the game but when it comes to winning the game the queen makes all the winning moves so when you go and exit your business you have basically put this in incredible and vulnerable piece of armor on your king because the cash flow, even though, yeah, it's gone, cannot be taken from you now because you have so much liquidity. You've basically supercharged your queen into going like Goku Super Saiyan level 19, right? It's, it's amazing. So when it comes to the game of chess, when it comes to the game of business, it is the queen that makes all the winning moves. And the queen is your liquidity. Luckily for you, you just sold your business in our hypothetical video here. So your liquidity is now incredibly strong. And this allows you to do 
a strategy I call the asset flywheel. It's an extremely powerful strategy. I've talked about it many times, both on this channel and elsewhere. But basically the sum of it is like, if you want to become a millionaire, sell your business, go and buy one to two smaller businesses in the exact same vein, because now you have the liquidity to do it, right? Now you can actually go buy those businesses. Because you're buying a business that is in the same business model, just not as big as the one you sold, you already know the path forward a bit. You already know the kind of challenges it's going to face as it grows. So you can kind of premeditate. And because you have ever so juicy liquidity, not only can you buy the business, but you can probably invest more money into the business for faster growth. After a year or two, rather than keeping it and trying to scale it, you come back to someone like me and you sell the business. You sell both of those businesses for much higher than what you bought it for. And then you take that liquidity, which is now even bigger than the liquidity of the original business you sold. And you buy one to four businesses for me, again, in the same exact vein, same business model, just a little bit smaller, blah, blah, blah. And you repeat the process over and over again. I call this the asset flywheel where one asset becomes with multiple assets. And over a period of a few years, well, congratulations, you're a multimillionaire. So I have made, I have helped make over 78 millionaires at the moment that they exit from our marketplace. Really, the number is probably closer to 120, 150 millionaires if you count all the people doing this strategy. Like I have, I noticed this, like I came up with a name for the strategy, but I'm certainly not the one that like started it. It's just something I noticed my clients do when sellers become my buyers and those buyers become not only rabid buyers of mine, but also become sellers again, much, much faster than any seller that goes and starts off their own business from scratch. So all in all, remember, if your goal is to go big as an entrepreneur and really achieve that financial freedom, your financial freedom doesn't really come from the business you're running. It comes from the business you're going to sell because that is when you get the liquidity and divorce yourself from all the evil tech tyrants with their rising ad costs and Google algorithm updates, all that good stuff, right? So when you get that liquidity and you start doing the asset flywheel over and over again, that is when you start really getting closer to financial freedom. So remember, don't fall in love with your business. It's the number one mistake I see. Don't don't fall in love with your business. Fall in love with the business model. All right. You want to make an exit, by the way, you can click the link down below. But if not, just give me a like and leave me a comment. I shall talk to you again soon.